Gonna be fun! So the thing with Doctor Doom is that he continues to remain one of Marvel's greatest supervillains to this day, and there is no denying that. Having said that, there are quite a few top-tier villains in the world of comics, but only a handful of them have been able to mark their very presence, thereby having stood the test of time. Today we will explore the monarch of Latveria's anatomy, and mind you, this will be quite an interesting analysis of Doctor Doom, so we suggest that you stay tuned till the end of this video. But before we get into it, we want to remind you of your importance to us. If you enjoy our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. Your subscription is not just a small click, it's a big part of our community and it means a lot to us. Thank you! Now let's begin. Who is Doctor Doom? Why does he wear a mask? Born in a Romani camp outside the capital of Hassenstadt, in the small European country of Latveria, Victor Von Doom was the child of gypsy travelers. His mother, Cynthia, was a practitioner of witchcraft and dabbled in the dark arts, which of course, her husband Werner wasn't okay with. Werner often begged Cynthia to stop using spells and communicating with the demons, but Cynthia craved more power so as to put an end to the constant, senseless persecution at the hands of King Vladimir of Latveria. Eventually, she called upon the demon Mephisto for power, and while the summoning of the demon worked in her favor, unbeknownst to Cynthia, Mephisto tricked her by instilling in her emotions of rage and revenge on King Vladimir's men. Now, the Baron's men were an absolute menace to the gypsies, always keeping them on the run, beating them up, and even going to the whole extent of plundering them. Naturally, after gaining power, Cynthia used magic to kill several of the Baron's men, but oblivious to her, the magic she resorted to also slaughtered many innocent children. What Cynthia was unaware of was that the whole thing was as per Mephisto's nefarious plans. The demon had only granted Cynthia the power to take revenge and not have the control to use it properly. Utterly appalled by her actions, Cynthia renounced the power, but one of the survivors ended up stabbing her. Cynthia somehow managed to make her way into the woods where she died in her husband's arms. Before passing away, she made Werner promise to keep Victor away from dark magic and prevent him from walking the same path as her. Werner moved all of Cynthia's mystical artifacts out of sight so that Victor would never find them. Sometime later, when Victor was 11 years old, Werner, who was a healer by profession, was called by King Vladimir to heal his dying wife. Upon not being able to cure the Baroness, the Baron held Werner accountable for it and sent his troops after Werner and his son. Werner, who had already fled to the Latvarian Alps with Victor, died after not being able to survive the cold, and Victor was left under the care of Werner's close friend, Boris. In the following years, Victor discovered his mother's mystical books and artifacts. He began studying the dark arts and in the process became well versed in sorcery. Needless to say, Victor's solitary goal in his life was to free his mother's soul from Mephisto, but all of his attempts were futile. In due course, Victor excelled in science and came up with a multitude of new inventions, and it is fitting to state that his achievements had become somewhat legendary. So much so, he also became a popular rebel of King Vladimir, especially after having his people defend themselves. Eventually, a US military representative approached Victor and offered him a scholarship to study at the Empire State University. While attending college, Victor met Reed Richards, and while the two of them were initially supposed to share a dorm room together, Victor was given a separate room with a secret, soundproof lab attached to it. No points for guessing, Reed Richards would very quickly become Victor's academic rival, given that both were highly intellectual at the end of the day. With time, Victor ended up designing a machine that he believed would help him get his mother back from the clutches of Mephisto. While Reed did point out a flaw in Victor's calculation, the latter's arrogance ended up causing what is fitting to state his biggest downfall. The machine ended up exploding, thereby causing Victor's face to scar horribly. This incident, and more importantly, the fact that Victor had been conducting unethical experiments also got him expelled from the university. Dishonored and embittered, Victor found his way to Tibet and came across a secret order of Tibetan monks. With him mastering their ways, Victor became their leader and the monks even magically forged Victor's impressive suit of armor. Excited to don the suit, Victor ended up placing the still hot metal mask on his face, which scarred his face even more than it had been. Victor came back to Ledveria as Doctor Doom to overthrow the Baron and set free the people of his homeland from the tyrant's rule. Doctor Doom slew the Baron, took control of the throne, and used his intelligence and creations to transform Ledveria into a flourishing nation. Now comes the part why Doctor Doom is always seen wearing a mask. 
Truth be told, we don't have a particular answer to this, and there is also no denying that Marvel has gone back and forth regarding what Doctor Doom looks like underneath the mask. To those of you who remember the 278th issue of Fantastic Four, you'll recall Doom just having a small scar on his face, but in the third issue of Secret Wars, you are bound to remember Doom's hideously disfigured face. Apart from his face being horribly scarred, he was also shown missing his nose. So, Doom's face underneath his iconic mask relies mainly on the story arc in which he appears, and for one to know what he truly looks like, he certainly has to take off his mask again. Why is he immune to vampires? Now, Latveria is super close to Transylvania, which of course happens to be the home of the blood-sucking Dracula. The fact that Doctor Doom was this close to Dracula made him take bold and practical measures to defend himself and his people. Those of you who have read the comic book series Captain Britain and MI-13 know precisely what we are hinting at. As seen in the 10th issue of the comic, MI-13 is a British intelligence agency, one that targeted supernatural beings with members such as Captain Britain, Black Knight, and of course Blade amongst others. Now, when it's Blade we are talking about, it just goes without saying that they will go after vampires, and in this case Dracula. The issue had Doctor Doom further elucidating his iconic armor and how it had splinters of the cross on which Christ was crucified. This made him invulnerable to vampires and every other mystical ambush, for that matter. Does he have magical abilities? While it is true that Doctor Doom's inclination to the mystic arts is solitary because of his gypsy heritage, or in other words, his mother, he became more skilled in magical abilities while spending a considerable amount of time with the secret order of the Tibetan monks. Why else would someone as supreme as Doctor Strange regard Doom as one of the most dynamic magic practitioners, and add to this, a potential Sorcerer Supreme? Believe us when we say that Doom's knowledge and power can have him hold his own against individuals like Morgan Le Fay, as well as Dr. Voodoo. In fact, Doom's mastery over spellcraft is most likely to surpass even Dr. Strange. Doom has had his magic displayed in the form of mystical blasts, force fields, invoking entities, casting spells, teleporting, dimension traveling, creating mystical portals, as well as mystical ensnaring. Does Doom's body have Wolverine's skeleton? It is in Jim Valentino's Guardians of the Galaxy, Doom discloses that he is literally eternal. Okay, if that seems a little too stretched for you, you cannot deny that Doom did reveal that his consciousness has survived into 3000 AD and that he also found a way to embed his brain into the adamantium-coated skeleton of the deceased Wolverine. That's not all. Doom also flaunts his new indestructible skeleton while engaged in a battle with a vicious mutant Rancor, or in other words, Wolverine's great-great-great-granddaughter. Is he immune to Human Torch and Invisible Woman's power? First things first, Doctor Doom's armor is made of titanium, which makes it highly durable. Now that this is out of the way, let's begin with the Human Torch. You know, with Doom being an adversary to the Fantastic Four, he made pretty sure that his suit of armor gave him enough protection from even the strongest of attacks, and that very much included Human Torch's fatal fire-based attacks. It is a different thing that Doom's armor was magically forged by the Tibetan monks, but he didn't just rely on magic. He went ahead and added his own technological tweaks to the suit over the years, so as to make his armor resistant to all things fire. As seen in the 318th issue of Fantastic Four, Johnny discovered, to his ire, that his fire blasts caused not even the slightest bit of damage to Doom. The same happened in the case of the Invisible Woman. Doom made a few changes to his face mask, adding an infrared feature to see invisible people, and in this case, the Invisible Woman, by resorting primarily to her heat source. Does his finger have a fire cannon? Believe it or not, the fingertip of Doom's right gauntlet can shoot an atomic-powered blast. Okay, it is certainly not as powerful as the blast from his gauntlets, but hey, it is undoubtedly cool, and there are no second thoughts about it. Doom was seen particularly resorting to this in the fifth issue of Amazing Spider-Man during his battle against Spider-Man. Well, lucky for Spidey that he was able to block the blast using a web shield on it. That's not all. Spider-Man also clogged it by webbing it, so as to prevent Doom from shooting at him further. Can he generate a powerful electrical force field? Well, you have reached a stage where you clearly should not be surprised when we tell you that he does possess the power to produce a highly powerful electrical force field. In fact, Doom has the ability to generate a point-blank electric shock, one that could cause unthinkable levels of damage to anyone who even dares to touch him. From killing his clone to knocking down both Colossus and Elvin Halliday, Doom has been seen using the Neural Disruptor, also known as the Electromagnetic Amplifier, quite a few times. Can he kill Thanos? 
Yep, you heard that right. You can blame Thanos' pomposity, arrogance, lack of respect, and his perpetual thirst for power that led to his brutal demise at the hands of Doctor Doom, who did not even hesitate for once while tearing apart Thanos' skeleton from his body. As seen in the eighth issue of Secret Wars, the Mad Titan made the mistake of calling Doom a weak god as well as a pretender. Of course, he did not stop at that. Thanos further told Doom to bow down before him. Well, what was he expecting? The death of Thanos at the hands of Doctor Doom is certainly one of the most vicious kills in Marvel Comics history. What do you think? We would love to discuss this in the comments section, so do not hesitate to share your thoughts. Can he steal superpowers? Stealing superpowers categorically falls under the fantastic exploits of Doctor Doom. Also, by superpowers, we are strictly referring to Doom stealing the power cosmic from the Silver Surfer in an attempt to empower himself. Mind you, with the power cosmic, Doom not only possessed the power to change reality, but he also had cosmic awareness, even if it was for a brief time. Having said that, Doom eventually lost the power cosmic when he ended up breaching a cosmic barrier that Galactus had particularly positioned around Earth in order to trap his Herald. Why did he make a deal with Mephisto? It would not be entirely wrong to say that Mephisto is basically the Marvel version of the Devil. He has his own hell, where he traps and tortures souls who end up making deals with him. One such soul that Mephisto has under his clutches happens to be none other than Cynthia, or in other words, the mother of Victor Von Doom. No wonder Doom is literally fixated on freeing his mother's soul. He even made a deal with Mephisto that he would be given the chance to summon the Devil once every year, primarily for a battle. The point is, if Doom wins, Cynthia's soul will be freed, but with him being rebuffed at every attempt, the people of Ledveria came to hate him even more. Does he have resurrection abilities? What happens when Iron Man roils with the power cosmic? He becomes Iron God. But have you ever wondered what the consequences could be when a cosmically powered Stark feels betrayed by the world's most arrogant Ledvarian? In the 17th issue of Iron Man Volume 6, with Stark blasting Doom, the latter gets disintegrated and the only things left behind are Doom's helmet and hood. Of course, the following issue has Stark reviving Doom and bringing him back to life, but this demands a different video altogether. And for that, you will have to stay tuned with us. Does he have any weaknesses? The biggest and perhaps the only weakness that Doom possesses is his ego, and God, he has a big one. His ego is the primary reason for his feud with Reed Richards to begin with. For some reason, Doom simply can never come to terms with the fact that Richards was unable to understand his equations a lot better than he did. Doom's sense of superiority, especially over Richards, caused his biggest downfall, and the rest, as you all know, is history. Marvelous Verdict Well, that is all for today, and with this, we finally come to the end of this video. So what are your thoughts on Doctor Doom? Do you think Doom's malicious blend of science and magic, and dare we disregard his genius intellect, make him someone almost impossible to defeat? Don't hesitate to let us know what you think in the comments section below. Now, if you enjoy this video, you know what to do. Please do leave a thumbs up and stay tuned with us, as we promise to come back with more exciting content. Till then, goodbye and thanks for watching. Have a nice one!